Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to create Pro Tools session templates for post-production mixes. In the first part I'll create a basic template for a stereo TV documentary mix and after that we'll take a more in-depth look at creating a template suitable for a 5.1 feature film mix which will include full provision for all of the necessary deliverables and laybacks. So let's start with the TV documentary session. I've already got Pro Tools open, so I'm just going to do Command N to create the session. I'll just call it TV Documentary Mix Template. It's a WAV session, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, which is fine. Click Create. And I'll just drop this on the desktop for now, I think. Now, exactly what you need for a session like this is going to very much depend upon the project. So I'm just going to create a basic one with kind of a minimal number of tracks, and then you can just take that and add to it as you need. So let's create some new tracks. I'm going to assume that there are some dialogue tracks in this. Maybe it's a straightforward one. So let's just say there's four mono dialogue tracks. Dialogue is quite often abbreviated to DX in post-production. It's a little bit odd, but that's how it is. And then let's say there's two mono voiceover tracks. Let's call those VO. Perhaps we've also got some music. Now, typically in the documentary, you don't normally have music in component form. You usually have a stereo pre-mixed track, either something that's been written for it or quite commonly from library music. So I may only need two of these. So let's do that. Two stereo audio tracks, call them music. And we may also need some sound effects, although not many usually for a documentary. But let's say we need, let's go overboard with it, actually. Let's say we need four monos and also for stereos if i press tab i can move into this name field rather than clicking the mouse all the time and then call them sfx what's uh, worth knowing is that even if you've got monos and stereos and you name them both the same you'll see i'll show you what happens with it it basically recognizes that and it will name them and number them sequentially like that so those are the basic audio tracks perhaps we're going to want to process dialogue with um, eq and compression I'll just drop these on provisionally with flat settings for now. Maybe we also want to do it on the VO tracks. You may or may not need those, but they're just there in case. And compression. Let's drop on the standard uh, stock compressor, just so everybody's got it. And I might put these into bypass, just so they're not doing anything until we really need them. Try to drop it there. We are actually going to route these through auxes, and it's quite possible, of course, to process on an auxiliary track. So say, for example, I had these four dialogue tracks and they were all routed through the same aux. I could stick the compressor on there, but what that robs you of the ability to do is independently control the compression settings on a track-by-track -track basis. So I'm going to assume in this case that the requirement for compression varies depending on the dialogue on that particular track. Next, I'm going to route these through their own respective aux inputs. So with those tracks selected, and only those tracks selected, I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, Option and Shift on the keyboard, click on the output of any of them, choose New Track, and make sure it's a stereo aux input for the sake of this TV documentary, and I'm going to call it forward slash DX. The forward slash is just my little indication that it's a bus, which finds its way, in this case, down an aux. I'll create that. and. Notice how it put it after the first selected track. That's because in that previous window, there was an option which I should probably have deselected called create next to current track. So actually now I'm going to move this. We're going to move it subsequently anyway, but I'll drop it after those. We probably want to be able to solo these and still hear what's coming through the AUX. So I can actually command click on the solo button to solo safe it. There's actually another potential solution to that. And that's to, rather than use an AUX, use a routing folder track. But we'll save that discussion for another time. So for now, let's color code these. I'm just going to reselect them all. So that one's selected. Shift click on the top one. Choose your own colors and try and stick to them from one project to another. I'm going to use red for the dialogue. Of course, the benefit of having a template like this is, and the whole purpose of it, you can use it from one project to the next, and you don't have to do this from scratch. This is kind of a one-off thing to build the template. After that, everything's a lot easier and quicker. Voiceover tracks, two of those. Select them. Option shift click on the output. Let's route it down a stereo aux, and it's going to be called forward slash VO. I'm going to deselect this, and what that will do is, rather than dropping it after the first selected track, it will drop it after the last one which is uh, a little bit better. They're all selected. Give them a color of your choosing. I'm going to make it orange. I'm going to do the same with the music tracks here. 
there's only two in this particular project because it's simple and then this is going to be forward slash mx so these abbreviations they're a little bit unusual really dx for dialogue where does the x come from mx for music the only one which really makes complete sense is the x in sfx or fx we'll get to that in a second so create that and solo safe and then color code these again this is down to personal preference but i'm going to make it that shade of green just to differentiate it from the other so it's obviously quite different and finally we've just got these sound effects tracks four monos four stereos select them all do the same thing once more forward slash sfx create that and do the solo save thing so that's command clicking on the solo button give it another color let's make it that blue which is sufficiently different to everything else i think now because it's easier to see it I think I'm going to switch to the mix window and just move these auxes. So I'm going to select the dialogue, voiceover, music, and the SFX one's already at the end. I was selecting those by clicking them and pressing the command key and drop those over here. Maybe I'll just reorder these actually. I'm going to put the VO one last. You'll probably see the reason for that shortly. So all the dialogue, all the music, all the SFX, voiceover finds its way through these auxiliaries so next we're going to select the dialogue music and fx or sfx aux tracks and route those to their own aux so they're going to go down another stereo auxiliary track and it's going to be called dme dme stands for dialogue music and effects it's basically everything in this case apart from the voiceover you'll see why shortly create that solo safe of course so if you think about it now what we'll end up with is content on all of these tracks which eventually find their way through to these two auxiliaries at the end so if I were to kill this one for example everything apart from the voiceover would be gone so this carries all the dialogue all the music all the effects and the voiceover is on its own track here what we need to then do is bring these two together through a final aux track which in this case will be called submaster and I'm going to solo save this. The only track we need now is a stereo master fader. I'll click create. And I'll just explain a little bit about the reason why we've got this DME track and a separate voiceover. If you imagine that this documentary might be repurposed into another language, it's quite possible that the in-camera dialogue would simply be subtitled, but the voiceover would be swapped. So when you're working on the mix for this, whenever the spoken dialogue, let's say for example you needed to drop the music level, dialogue comes up, you bring the music down, dialogue stops, bring the music back up again, that's all fine, that all finds its way through to these auxes, but whenever there's voiceover, rather than doing the automation for the voiceover on the music track by pulling the music down whenever there's voiceover, keep the fader level high on that track, and then over here on the DME, when the voiceover happens, pull the DME down, and then when the voiceover stops, you can push it back up. It's quite good to do that in um, automation touch mode, but the purpose of this is you keep the automation for dialogue, as in where the music drops for dialogue, separate to the automation for voiceover. And the reason for that with regards to foreign language versions is that if you do need to swap the voiceover into another language, in all likelihood, the duration of it is going to be different. It could be longer, it could be shorter, and you don't want to be unpicking automation from over here. Ideally, you just want its own automation track on the DME, so you'd end up with something, let's just draw this in for the sake of it, you know, you'd end up with something like this periodically. I'll just copy and paste that for the sake of quick illustration. So that would be where voiceover happens, and then another one happens here, another one happens here, and then another one happens here. Maybe that's different length, you know. Um, and that's the original language voiceover. So you've got those sections, they're all that length, but let's say you then dub it into another language and it's not that duration, it's shorter or it's longer. What you can do is basically just scrap that and redo the automation on the DME for the language in question. Hopefully that makes sense. This actually impacts on the next step, which is gonna be setting this up for doing laybacks. A layback is a recording of the mix generally inside the session, and we're gonna do more than one version of this. So the submaster, as we know, is where the whole mix comes through. Of course, you would have some kind of metering on here. Let me just drop that on the master fader, actually. This is the one I tend to use, Waves WLM Plus. And because I'm mixing stuff for UK broadcast, I'm using the EBU R128 setting. 
let me just select this. So I tend to use this one and I'm working to a minus 23 LUFS long term or integrated loudness. In the US it would be minus 24 LKFS. So I'll keep that on there and then from the submaster let's create a send. There's more than one way of doing this actually. I'm going to do it with a send to a new track which is not going to be an aux, it's going to be an audio track and I'm going to call this mix print choose your own name for it which you feel is appropriate create that what that allows me to do is if I just increase the send level on here I'll just default it by alt clicking it that then permits me to do a real time recording of the whole mix onto this mix print track but you've got to be careful because at the moment this is coming out the same output as everything else so we're going to hear an increase in level and it's going to be doubled up to get around that you either drop the fader level on this or you can mute it or you can send it down a vacant bus which you're not using so I'll just use this one which is not currently rooted anywhere you can tell when it's rooted and when it isn't because if it's yellow it's going somewhere if it's not then it hasn't yet been used so any of these are fine I'll use that one and I'm just gonna right click this and rename it dummy that's what I use to signify that that's basically a dead end. Nothing's going to receive its input from that. It's just my way of knowing that I'm not going to hear it coming out of the speakers doubled up again. And why not? Let's mute it just to be doubly sure of that. Next, we're going to do what's called an undipped DME. So we've got the DME here. We know that this has everything minus the voiceover. I'll create a send on here. You could, of course, use any of these sends, but Personally, I like to always reserve a certain send for a certain thing. So, for example, send A only is just a mix print. Send B, I'm going to use that for the DME. And new track, stereo audio, DME um, undipped. Okay, create that. And I should probably just move this over here. Now... What the undipped is, it's a version of the mix which doesn't take account of any automation that I've done on here. So if where the original voiceover was, I've brought this down and then pushed it up and brought it down and brought it up again, we don't want that automation in the layback for this. And that's because the purpose of this version of the mix, the dialogue music and effects mix, is that if somebody did need to repurpose it for another language and they didn't have the Pro Tools session, then they can just take your mix and do their own uh, ducking in level or dipping as it's called and to make sure that this doesn't include any of the automation on that track this is going to be a pre-fade send and I'll just make sure the fader is at zero and you can easily tell when it's pre-fade because there's a little blue indicator on there and once again this is going to go down that dead end which I've called dummy like that so whole mix will record onto there the dial of music and effects undipped mix will record onto there. It's unlikely that you're going to need to record a dipped version of the DME. So what I mean by that is a version of the DME, which basically has all the content coming down in level where the voiceover would be, but no actual voiceover. You're probably not going to need that because any alternate version will be a different duration. But let's do it just for illustration. Make it a stereo audio track. I'll call this DME dipped. Okay and this is where it differs we're not going to make it pre-fade we're just going to keep it post-fade send it to zero and then move this over to the right hand side i'll mute it and send it down the dummy bus maybe i should also color code these to signify that they are layback tracks let's go with i don't know that shade of green and that should do it. So that's a basic template for a TV documentary mix, which allows for main mix plus a DME. And the final stage now, just to make this into an actual template, is to go to the file menu, save as template, and then you can put this into any of the um, categories. I'll put it into one which I've previously created, Pulse Templates, TV documentary mix template. If there was any media within this, you could include it. That might be the case, for example, if you were doing an episodic TV show where perhaps the intro music was always the same. There's no media in this though, so I'll just click OK. What that now means is, if I then go to uh, here and create a new session, 
and I choose to do it from a template, I can delve into the folder where I put it, Pulse Templates, and you can see I've got it there, TV Documentary Mix Template, and that would then basically create a new session which would be based on this, and you can use that as a basis for all future sessions of that nature. Now we'll take a look at the slightly more in-depth process of creating a template for a 5.1 feature film mix. One important thing to consider with this is the deliverables. Now here you can see a list of deliverables which I was given. I've copy and pasted this from their document. This was for something which I finished a couple of weeks ago and quite annoyingly actually they decided to send me this once I'd already done the mix and so I could have made full provision for this in, in the way I laid the session out. So I had to slightly repurpose it but it, it wasn't too bad. So this is not that uncommon. Let's just go through these briefly. Firstly they want the theatrical feature 5.1 surround print master. So print master is just a term used to describe basically just in this case the, the audio mix. Next on the list, Theatrical Feature 2-Track LTRT Printmaster. So this is a stereo down mix, which could be derived from the 5.1, and the term LTRT stands for left total, right total. Technically, that's a version of the mix in stereo, which is also decodable to surround, so it's encoded with something like Dolby Pro Logic, for example. The only downside to that is you do need additional software to do that, so something such as Soundcode LTRT tools from Nayrink would allow you to take something from 5.1, encode it down to stereo, but use this matrix encoding technology, in this case Dolby Pro Logic, so that it can be decoded to a basic form of surround sound from the stereo signal. But sometimes in these documents, you know, it's often written by someone who doesn't have a full understanding of exactly what's required. And so it's worth checking, do they really need an LTRT or can you get away with just a straight stereo down mix, which is called an LORO. So the difference is LORO, left only, right only, is a stereo down mix with no surround encoding. LTRT, left total, right total. Stereo down mix, once again derived from the 5.1, but in that case with something like Dolby Pro Logic encoding. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Next thing on the list, theatrical feature stereo 6-track DME. So, there's a bit more description below this about exactly what that means. Theatrical feature 6-track DME, dialogue music in effects, shall be configured from the final fully mixed stereo print master so that dialogue music in effects will be split out and separated in the following way. Track 1 and 2 dialogue, track 3 and 4 music, tracks 5 and 6 effects. I won't even bother going into any real description about that. We'll sort that out when we get to it shortly. So next thing is theatrical feature digital 5.1 surround music and effects. That's fine. That's basically everything apart from the dialogue. Then stereo two track LTRT music and effects. That's a stereo version in theory with the surrounding coding minus the dialogue. They also list the music score and source music. So in this case, the music which was used in the mix. And finally, 5.1 dialogue, music and effects stems separately and they did mention that audio should be in the film channel order L, C, R, L, S, R, S, L, F, E so that's left, centre, right, left, surround, right, surround and low frequency effects or the sub conveniently that's the channel order that Pro Tools uses um, which is actually slightly different to what you may on occasions be asked for which is the SMPTE channel order but maybe we'll save that for another time so for now let's start making the session. I'm going to try and build it as quickly as possible and then I'm going to check that I've made provision for all of these laybacks which there's quite a few of but that's fairly common. So here we go. Let's call this I won't create this from a template 5.1 film mix template you may on certain films work at 96 kilohertz for now I'll just do this at 48, drop it on the desktop. Ordinarily, I don't work on the desktop, I, I work on a separate drive, but this just makes it convenient so I know where things are when I'm doing these tutorials. So, save that. Let's do this as quick as we possibly can. You may need quite a few dialogue tracks in a film, but maybe not 45, let's just do four. Uh, four dialogue tracks. This part of the process is quite similar to what we did before, the difference comes in from this point onwards. In fact, before I do any routing, let me just go to the I.O. setup and we've probably inherited those buses from the previous one. So I'm going to just default those. I could have 
been more careful when I created the session, but I didn't. And so we inherited all of those. So I've defaulted those back to what they start with. Now it's a 5.1 mix. So dialogue goes down uh, 5.1 bus and it's an aux like that. Dialogue, create that. Once again, choose your own colors for these. This, like I said, on the face of it, is quite similar to the process, but we're going to factor in things like the down mix and the provision for all those alternate versions of the mix. It's worth pointing out that a proportion of the dialogue will be ADR, so you could potentially keep these as just location audio dialogue tracks. Let's just, for the hell of it, add in a couple of ADR tracks. They're going to be mono at source, but of course they route their output to that dialogue bus. And I'll just color code those accordingly, as with the other one. So we've got original dialogue, ADR. In practice, this would get a lot more complicated than this, really. This would, you would end up with multiple playlists and probably a lot more tracks than this, but this is kind of a bare bones template. And if you need to build on it, then you can just add extra tracks. Next, let's work on sound effects. So for a film, there's gonna be a lot of sound effects. I'm gonna do eight monos. SFX and let's add another line here. I'll do another eight stereos. Okay. You may need more than that, way more than that. But like I said, we're keeping it minimal. Otherwise the template is just absolutely crazy. There's our effects. Same again, route it to a new track. I'm holding down option and shift with them all selected. 5.1 aux input forward slash SFX. Color it your own color, whatever that may be. Let's make it green in this case. Um, solo safe that, did I solo safe the other one? Yes, I did. Okay. Now the sound effects, you could break it down into lots of different component parts. You know, you may have some which are pre-recorded sound effects. You may have some which are ones which you've recorded for the project, perhaps Foley, cloth sounds and so on. In fact, I'm going to assume that all of these are pre-existing sound effects. So let's say it's a low budget film. We don't have the money to go out with custom recording absolutely everything, but we are going to custom record a few things. So I'll make four mono Foley tracks and you could route these through their own orcs. Let me now shift to the mix window actually, because it might be easier to see it here, but I'm going to actually just categorize these as sound effects. Again, I'm just trying to create a template which is functional but basic and then you can add to it. Dialogue, effects, let's do some music next. For the project which I finished recently, the composer gave me the music in stereo form and he knew that it was a 5.1 mix but maybe it was too time consuming or complicated for him to do the mix in 5.1 so I actually in that case up mixed those files to 5.1. So I'll tell you what we'll do here, let's create two stereo music tracks, then I'll just make a 5.1 music track as well, just in case we were ever given, you know, some music which was pre-mixed. Let me show you this. Music, um, stereo, stereo, 5.1. You of course need a plugin that's capable of upmixing stereo to um, a greater number of channels. And the one which I have on here is, it's not the best one, but it's, it's reasonable. It's the Waves UM226 stereo to 5.1. When I put this on, you'll see that the number of channels goes up, of course, to six like that. Watch this, I can copy this across by option dragging it. So that currently is a stereo aux track. Drag this over and click on change. You can see we've now got 5.1 and you can mess around with this and uh, tailor it you know to get a different sound different width to the music um, probably a better one than this is halo up mix which um, seems to be the preferred one but you know the um226 does the job and if you're on a budget then it's it's pretty good next we're going to of course route these to a, an aux so two which were stereo at source so i could although the meters show six on here it's still basically a stereo track, so I could drop stereo source content onto that and it would be up mixed. This one, however, is 5.1 at source, so that does require 5.1 content. Let me route these. This is going to be a new track 
5.1 music solo safe and then color code it I'll probably end up choosing different colors for these to what I chose in the last template but you know that's all right maybe that's a bit too similar to those no that's okay actually what I should do though is change these Foley tracks maybe I want them to be a similar shade of green to the SFX tracks but just slightly different so it's green it's still in the same category but it's not the same green if that makes sense let's make it like that let's just check what we've got so far then dialogue with its own orcs SFX with its own orcs music same thing drag these auxiliary tracks to the end like that now a big session like this or what could become a big session like this this is where folder tracks would really start to come in if you want I can do a separate video about those tracks but it's an easy way to basically collapse tracks down so that you're not having to scroll through loads of stuff as the session gets more complex so we are keeping this simple as simple as can be let's route these through see at the moment this is a real problem they're all going through the DX bus which of course will create this feedback loop as it can continuously come through this auxiliary we definitely don't want that we need them to go through a 5.1 aux which is going to be the submaster in this case create that solo safe it so the whole mix finds its way through there and let's also make 5.1 master fader like that click create whenever you create a master fader just make sure that it is assigned to the correct output bus this currently isn't this is actually assigned to the DX and I suspect that the reason for this is because I didn't set this up in IO setup in the first place so if you go to the output you can see I've only got this set up for a stereo uh, monitor output I'm just gonna delete all of these and let's use this as a 5.1 output just for the sake of what we're doing here and I'll maybe rename this 5.1 out and that's fine of course you'd have to have the speakers hooked up uh, to the applicable outputs and actually I just realized there's one thing I should have done on here which is to go to back to this again and go to the bus tab and as well as having the output in 5.1, you also have to have a corresponding bus. So let's make 5.1 bus. Just call it 5.1 bus. And then make sure that this is actually in this column mapped to the output, the one and only 5.1 output in this case, which I just call 5.1 out. Now, finally, we can go back to here, go to output, and it's there. And also the submaster just route that to there and that's fine let's just double check everything dialogue FX music they go through the submaster submaster goes to the 5.1 bus there's a master fader which controls it in a basic way that's kind of set up for what we need a couple of other considerations for a film mix one is the session start time so quite commonly mixes will either start at one hour or ten hours let me go to the session setup window so that was command with two on the numpad session start I'm going to change this if I change it to 10 hours let's just do that that'll be fine but that doesn't give us any space at the start of the session for anything prior to the mix such as either audio lineup tones or maybe a clock I'll talk briefly about that in a second let's just actually add a little bit of time at the beginning you can think of time code as like a 24 hour clock really that goes from 0 to 23 hours 59 and however many frames let's make it start at 9 hours and let's just do one minute 9 hours 59 okay and if I press forward slash on the numpad I can go into the start field at the top and I'm just gonna actually enter 10 hours just to park the cursor there then I'm gonna press enter and I'm just going to call this start that's just a convenient locator so that I can easily skip to the 10 hour start point but now I'm going to assume firstly assume that this is 24 frames per second and secondly bring in this little leader clock which I've created now these vary quite considerably between projects but this is the one I've just mocked up for the sake of this and this could be 4k it could be 1080 you might even be given 720p video on occasions but drop this in it does actually have audio in it so let's bring it in 
click OK, make sure it's at the session start. In fact, it's probably not going to be at the session start, but I'll drop it there initially, then I'll move it. OK, and where's the audio going to go? It's going to go into the audio files folder for the session. Drop this at the top. It's up to you where you put stuff in your own session. I personally always like to have the video at the top of the session. It's just it's just logical for me. And if we open this up, it's there. And you can see that the frame rate there, 24 frames per second, is in white, which, as I mentioned in a previous video, if you saw it about um, things to consider when using video in Pro Tools, the time code rate in the session setup window should be a match for that. If it wasn't, then it goes red to tell us that something's amiss. And so you go to here and make sure it matches. There's various reasons why that's important, but just make sure you set it correctly at the start of every single project. So without worrying about the sync for now, let's just play this and see what we've got on this clock. Like I said, this one's just a mock-up clock um, and it will vary from one project to the next. You, you may not even be given one. This one has an ident tone, which comes in at 20 seconds. And then it goes mute for a while continuously counting down on screen, 10 second marker, like that. And then we've got five, four, and three. You can see the beeps on the timeline. It would probably go off at this point, and then nothing, and then program start. So to get this to align with the start of this, I could maybe select them, Command-G to group it, give it a name if you want. I'll just call it leader, like that. And we want to snap the end of it to here. So I'll recall that memory location, dot one dot on the numpad because it's memory location one. Hold down control with command on the keyboard and with the grabber tool, click this and the end of it will snap to the cursor. So now that's all good. Now it ends where the program begins, or in this case, the film. And then the film would start. So that's fine. But now we need to make sure that we have a means of actually catering for all of these different deliverables. Let's have a look at them one by one. First thing is theatrical feature 5.1 surround print master. Okay. Now in the previous template I created earlier in this video for the TV mix, we did them as an internal layback. Of course you could do an internal layback. Remember though, when you're laying back stuff in a Pro Tools session and you're working with 5.1, you can quite easily eat up the entire voice count. So, you know, if I was doing a layback of the dialogue, that's six tracks, SFX another six tracks, the main mix another six, and you add in all the variants and the stereo versions, it's quite possible just by doing the laybacks, you could end up going over the voice count capability of your Pro Tools system. So as an alternative to that, I'm actually gonna do these as bounces from the session, basically bounce to disc. First one being this main 5.1 mix, which of course is on the submaster here. Let's do a send from here, and I'll send this down a bus. In fact, let me do this a slightly different way, actually. I'm going to go to the I.O. setup. This is because I'm not going to be laying it back onto tracks. I'm going to make a bus specifically for this purpose. In fact, I may need to just alternate between these two documents just to keep a, an eye on what I need. So 5.1 surround print master. Let's make a new path here. Make sure it's in the right format. 5.1 and then 5.1 print, we'll call it. What else do we need? We need a two track LTRT print master. On this particular computer where I am at the moment, I don't have an LTRT encoding plugin, so I'll just do an LORO stereo mix. So let's add this LORO print. What I might do is make a note after this of the name of the buses that I'm going to use. So just put these over here 5.1 print. And on this one, we're going to have L-O-R-O print, left only, right only, stereo down mix with no surround encoding. Next is theatrical feature stereo six track DME. So this one's a little bit different because remember, that's the one where they want a six track file. So basically like a poly WAV file, which has one and two is dialogue, three and four is music, five and six is effects. Because I need to bounce that down in a slightly different way, I'm going to come back to that one. Let's do that one last. Okay, so we'll, we'll skip past that one for now. So next we've got 5.1 surround music and effects. Let's do that. So this is going to be 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5.1, 5
5.1 M and E like that. I'll just name it on here. 5.1 M and E. Next, two track LTRT music and effects. So once again, that's going to be stereo, but I'm actually going to do LORO M and E like that. That's fine. And then this one isn't actually a bounce. The stereo music score and source music, they would just need an export of all the separate files. So when I did this, I actually just sent them all the component parts which were used for the film. So that's not really a bounce, that's fine. In fact, let's just delete that from the list for now. Next one, 5.1 dialogue, music and effects stems. Okay, so these are gonna be three separate things. Let's create a 5.1. 5.1 uh, dialogue. I'll, I'll put the full name in just so it's clear. 5.1 dialogue. 5.1 music. And then 5.1 effects. Okay. That's okay. I'm just going to list these on here. 5.1. I'll just put. I'll know what that means. DME. Okay. Now we need to actually. Think about making provision for this. So here we go. Submaster, let's create a send from this. This is gonna go down this bus, which we just created, which is the 5.1 print. Okay, make sure that's set to unity gain. So everything goes out of it. It's post fade. There probably won't be any fader automation on the Submaster anyway, but nevertheless, it will take account of things like um, if we had any processing on this, you know, so if you had any overall mix processing, that would of course be on there. Um, you may well have things like reverbs. I haven't put any of those into the session at the moment. Let me just make them just so it's a bit more complete. So say for example, on this dialogue, I might want uh, a dialogue reverb. So let's just click on the sends on here. So I'll send them from send F actually. So I'll use those for the reverbs. And I'll, I'll put a provisional send on here to a new track, which is gonna be 5.1 aux reverb. In practice, you would more than likely have several reverbs to cater for different spaces in the film. I'll just create one for the sake of this. Create, and then uh, root that because it's classed as dialogue. Let's root that down the dialogue bus. In fact, it's already done it. And on this, I'm gonna put a plugin. My personal favorite reverb is Phoenix Verb from, well, formerly from Exponential Audio, now of course owned by Isotope. But um, the settings for this, of course, are dependent on what you need. I'll just go with the defaults for now. And then I'll just color code this slightly closer to the other dialogue tracks, but a little bit different because it's reverb. I mean, you know, you may have a different way of doing it. That's just how I'm choosing to do it. And next we need to account for the LORO, the left only, right only, stereo down mix of the whole feature. This is actually fairly easy to do. So firstly, I'm going to, click on the submaster and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, I probably don't need the send on this. So I'll just take that one off. And then we've of course got a direct copy of it. I'm just going to rename this submaster stereo submaster ST. Then I need to put a down mixer on it, which is basically going to take those six channels and fold them down to stereo. So it's under the sound field category, down mixer. And Essentially, you just have six faders, one for each channel of what was the 5.1. I'm going to use a preset here, which is the 5.1 to stereo with the LFE muted. Because the LFE channel is kind of a supplementary channel, and because it takes up a lot of headroom, usually you would mute it, or at the very least set it at a very low level here, because you end up with too much low frequency information, plus the potential for clipping. Of course, you do have the overall output fader here. So when you run the audio through this, it's quite likely that you're gonna to wanna to adjust this just to ensure that the overall signal level is about right. So let's close that. And from here, there's once again, more than one way of doing this. I could create a send, but at the moment you can see the output from this is going to the 5.1 bus. We definitely don't want that, but we do need to get a signal from it. So a couple of options here. Option one, I could once again, as I did in the previous one, create a dummy bus and send it nowhere and then do this on a send. Or, and I'm gonna do this, I think, alternatively, rather than sending this to a vacant bus, I'm gonna send this directly to the LORO print bus. 
Now, the way that I'm doing it in this session, these are basically going nowhere. But that doesn't matter because when we do the bounce to disc, eventually when we get to this stage, we'll be able to select all of the different buses here. And irrespective of whether they have a destination within the session, it will still bounce the content that's on those buses. Of course, if you had enough available voices and it was desirable to do so, you could create print tracks for each of these. So I could create a 5.1 print audio track, a stereo LORO print track, and so on, and record those, lay those back into the session. It's entirely down to you. I'm not going to do that here, but you could do. Let's move on. The next thing we're going to skip past for now, as I mentioned, the six track DME, and we're going to do the 5.1 surround music and effects mix, the M&E mix. What's interesting here is that like I said, these were copy and pasted basically from a document provided by the film company. And for some reason here, they've decided suddenly to mention the word digital. Of course, it's all digital and there's nothing different about this one. It's just a difference in the wording. So let's do this 5.1 surround music and effects mix. We're going to send these from the music track. Let's do this on here. So that's going to go to the m and &E bus. 5.1 M&E, make sure that the signal level is at zero, and so is the effects. So I can just copy this across. So the combination of those two, music and effects, caters for that requirement. So when I bounce something from that bus, we'll get the output of both of those tracks. Next on the list is the stereo two track LTRT music and effects mix, which we're actually gonna do as LORO. So remember, we're not gonna be including the Dolby Pro Logic encoding. And so I'm going to do this by duplicating some of these auxes. I'm actually going to need a stereo version of all of these uh, ultimately. So I'll do that now. Right click, duplicate. I'm not going to bother with the sends. Copy those or duplicate them. And then um, just rename them. This one's going to become stereo. This one's going to become the same. And so is this one. So stereo versions of each and then we need the down mixer i'm going to just copy the plugin from the other one so holding down the option key dragging that across you'll see as soon as that goes on the number of channels drops down like that just go back to the document and double check what we're doing here so two track music and effects okay so actually i'm going to move these all of the stereo tracks, I think I'll just put on the right hand side here so they're all kind of in their own section. And as before, I'm going to use the outputs on these rather than sends. So music and effects both selected, hold down option and shift. So that's the do to all selected command in Pro Tools. Click on the outputs of just these two and then choose the bus. And this is going to be the LORO ME like that. And that's that catered for. Let's just see what else we need. Theatrical feature 5.1 dialogue, music and effects stems. Okay, I need to remember that these are separate. Dialogue, music and effects. Firstly on the dialogue track here, let's just create a send and that's going to be 5.1 dialogue. Send that. And the next one is going to be 5.1 music. In fact, I just put that one on the wrong track. I'm going to reorder these just because I've got it in my head that dialogue, music and effects go in that order. Make doubly sure that it's on the right one and then just check that I've increased the send level on each like that. Dialogue, music and finally SFX. Like that. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's just run through it quickly 5.1 print so we've got that coming from the submaster the 5.1 submaster the loro print comes from this stereo down mix track stereo version of the submaster the 5.1 m e mix comes from the music and effects 5.1 auxes and then the loro left only right only music and effects comes from the SFX and MX tracks. The dialogue track here, this stereo dialogue track, we're not yet using because that's only going to be required in the six track DME. So we will get to that. I'm just going to mute it for now. We've also done the 5.1 dialogue, 5.1 music, 5.1 effects, all the separate things. Now I'm just going to create the bounces. And so that I don't end up with a very large file, I've just made a short timeline selection here that's just 15 seconds long. Bounce the disc. If you select the first bus here, 
because I created them sequentially in IO setup, I can then just click repeatedly on the plus button. You can see they're all appearing there, they're in their own formats, and eventually we'll get to one we don't need, the reverb, so take that one off. So that looks good to me. It's WAV interleaved. This is really important, the delivery format. Because we want these to be separate bounces, so self-contained within themselves, we want to make sure file per bounce source is selected. If I accidentally chose single file, it would bounce them all, but they'd all be in one very large WAV file. So for this, separately, file per bounce. It's 24-bit 48 kilohertz, that's fine. I'll just keep the default name, my name, and then bounce. And that's done it very quickly, of course, because we have no audio in the session. But if we have a look in the bounced files folder, you can see we've got all of the different things I've just done. So it takes on the file name, underscore, and then the particular bus name at the end of it. So that looks fine. The only thing that we didn't do, just going back to that document, is the six track DME. So just to recap, that's a six track file which has stereo dialogue, stereo music, stereo effects on uh, tracks one to six. Going back to here then, we do need to create buses for that. So I'm just gonna go one last time into IO setup and create new paths. So they're all gonna be stereo. First one, dialogue, stereo, and then music, stereo, and then SFX, stereo. Okay, now thinking about this, I am actually gonna very slightly change something over here. One really minor thing, I'm just going to move these into the dialogue music and effects order, personal preference. But the other thing is, currently, I've got the music and effects with an output to the music and effects bus. I'm actually going to change that to a send, and you'll see the reason for that shortly. Let's put that here. So we're going to do this on a left-only, right-only M&E. There, and copy that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the outputs of these dialogue music and effects to go down their own buses. And there's actually a quick way I can do this. With them all selected, we already know that if you hold down option with shift and you click an output or a send, it's going to do that to all the selected tracks. But if you add the command key in with that, so command option shift, and then you click an output or you create a send, what it will do is it will cascade them. So if I start with dialogue, we're going to get dialogue, music and effects in order. So that's just a little bit of a time saver. Now what we can do is another bounce to disk and we're going to create that six track DME. Take all of these off, start afresh with it. So we just want stereo dialogue, stereo music, stereo effects, but this is the reason why we're going to do it as a separate bounce. The delivery format Last time we did it as a file per bounce, because that's what we needed. This time, however, I'm going to do it as a single file, and it will combine those into one WAV file. Let's just change the name, or at least add the letters, DME. Maybe DME Stereo. Bounce that. And then if we just take a look at it, you may have seen the word combining on screen there. So it bounces it, and then it combines the files. It takes a little bit longer, of course, when you've actually got some content. If you're doing a whole film, it'll take a, a little while longer. There's the file, DME Stereo. You can see that the file size of that is three stereos, and it's comparable in size to a 5.1 file of the same duration. So we know in this case that that contains six channels. OK, so all I need to do now is actually save this as a template. So file, save as template. 5.1 film mix template and I'll put it into my folder once again and that's good so if I were to create a new session now from a template you can see that we have that as well as the previously created TV documentary mix template so hopefully you found the information in this video useful you know it's tricky catering for all of these different requirements but it's entirely possible in one session as we just saw the two templates which I've just created I'm going to make them available for a short period of time as a free download there is a link in the description so get those while you can and feel free to use them for whatever you want just one other thing if I close this session I just want to show you something before we go um, on this drive here I've actually got these are the deliverables which I did for this feature film I just finished. Now, unfortunately, this hasn't been released yet, so I can't actually play any of it, but I can at least show you the audio waveforms here. The um, six-track DME here, that is the entire mix. 
in the six track format. And I just want to show you when those three components, stereo, dialogue, music and effects are combined in that way, I just want to give you an indication of how Pro Tools interprets that. So I'll just create a quick session for this. Just call it DME, that'll do. And drop this in. If I drop this into the clip list, what you'll see straight away is Pro Tools will recognize it's actually three individual components. So you can see we've got dialogue, effects, music, they're all stereo. So if you click on this little triangle, you can see that they're comprised of left and right. And then of course, if I select these and drag them into the edit window, just making sure that the timeline drop order is set to top to bottom actually. Drag this in, it will create tracks for them. And if I just expand these to make them a bit bigger, you can see that we do have track of nothing but dialogue there, track of nothing but uh, effects, on that one and then the music on that one so this is a forthcoming feature called tribal get out alive so keep an eye out for that anyway thanks for watching this has been a fairly long video but i hope you found it useful let me know if there's anything in particular which you'd like me to make a video about in the future and i'll see you again soon